Pramod and Sujit briefly mentioned about uh, about Beaconomics, right? It's an open source initiative by FIDE that uh, allows anybody to rapidly deploy open networks, right? Like the ones we know about, like ONDC, ONS, etc. Right? So uh, just 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 to probably build up to that, just if you, if you really wind the clock back around 30, 35 years, right? Setting up a, a simple website used to call, it so range anywhere between like you know, ten thousand dollars to almost a hundred thousand dollars, right? Depending upon its uh, sophistication, right? But progressively, as the uh, as decade by decade, as we pro progressed, uh, the whole cost of building a website came down because the larger tech ecosystem came together and started building these tools and frameworks and utilities and plugins and you know libraries, right? And 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 and, uh, and standards, especially that allowed uh, a larger ecosystem to sort of you know and allow the overall cost of building a website or an application suddenly come down, right? I mean, if you really look back, the creator and the developer, the content creator and the content developer are usually the same. The guy who was building the website was usually the person who was also putting content on the website, right? So that, so, but today, if you really look at Instagram, like today I can post content on this, I don't have to develop Instagram, right? So the internet has significantly evolved. And today we are also going, today we are looking through another wave, a similar wave, of open networks as a layer on top of the internet where we are facing some very similar challenges. Right? So it's beckoned in its around fifth year now and we have noticed that, uh, uh, that to set up a network, right? It, technologically speaking, setting up a network doesn't really take a lot, but actually bringing it to scale right, is a whole different volume, which means that all the overheads, all the technological overheads that require all the infrastructural overheads that require us to set up a network must be reduced to a minimum so that we can actually focus on things that are more interesting, like you know, interesting experiences, right? Like you know, ordering a coffee and you know, ordering a cab and then getting that coffee delivered on the way into the cab. You know, these are the kind of things that you need to work on. Uh, a similar analogy would be an Android developer. What if the Android developer today had to understand all the way down to the TCP/IP stack to actually build a particular application, which is not a, you know, which is quite bit of an overhead, right? But Android abstracted all of that and saying, hey, if you can focus on building apps and experiences and forget about the underlying years. Right? So, so this is because Android was a tool, Android was a framework that was built to actually quickly launch applications. So Beaconomics is a similar project that allowed to quickly launch open networks. Right? So let us take a quick uh, look at how we can launch quickly launch an open network and then how we can connect an application with that which Mayur will showcase to you uh, in just a moment. So just okay, so for those who are familiar with open networks, open networks typically require the installation of four different types of platforms. One is uh, primarily one of the most important uh, entities is the registry which contains a list of platforms uh, that you know have gone through a certification or a compliance process. Right, ONDC has a registry, Honest has a registry. All the platforms that are on the registry can be considered as trusted. And then there's a gateway that allows you to broadcast search requests, allows for platforms to have, you know, uh, an equal opportunity to respond to search requests. And then there's a BAP, which uh, uh, which on ONDC is known as a buyer app. Right, there's a BPP which on ONDC which is called a seller app, on Honest it's called a seeker app and a provider app. So these four different types of platforms are key to setting up any open network. Now, what if so typically what we have observed is that the average time, I mean, over the last few years, we have noticed that the typical time that it takes to set up an open network ranges from all the way from a few months, right, to as low as a few weeks, right, with definitely a lot of improvement happening and a lot of you know process getting you know standardized. We have brought it down to uh, a mere a few weeks, but what if we could bring it down to a matter of minutes? That is what I'm going to show you. So, uh, so here I have four terminals opened. All four of them basically are now. I'm going to log into four different machines, empty machines that have been launched, that have been deployed with the software Onyx. So, I'm just going to log into uh, a machine where I'm going to install a registry. Okay. I'm going to log into a machine where I'm going to set up a gateway. Okay. All of these are empty machines right now. Right? And I'm going to log into a machine that is going to set up 
uh, a BAP adapter. And I'm going to log into a machine that where I'm going to set up a BPP adapter. Right. So these are the four machines that are currently available. All these four machines have the Onyx software that is currently running right, over here. So I just go into the Onyx folder. Into each one of these machines. So I've gone into the Onyx folder of each of these machines and I'm going to just run the installation script. Yeah. So on the first machine, I, when I launched Onyx, right, so it shows me the Onyx logo and then it asks me, hey, what would you like to do? Would you like to join an existing network? Or would you like to create a new network? Or would you like to set up a network on your local machine? Let's say if you're a developer, if you want to merge multiple networks together, or if you want to configure existing networks that are already there, etc. So there are, it gives you a bunch of options, right? So obviously the first setup, the first step to you know launching any sort of open network ecosystem is to create a new existing network, which is the first step is to set up a network registry. So I select two. <coughs> setting up a new network. Now it says, which platform do you want to set up first? Most obviously, it's most, more often than not, it's mostly the registry that I need to set up, right? So it says, okay, uh, is there a network specific configuration, right? This is, we'll, we'll get to this later. Registries are, you know, generally not, you know, that not require these, okay? It'll say, okay, do you have a publicly accessible registry URL? I'll say, yes, I just want to paste the registry URL over here. Okay. And it has already it has started installing the registry, right? So it has started the registry. While the registry is getting installed, I'll go and you know install the run the same software on the gateway machine. Okay. Now over here as you see the registry has been installed, right? It's been a matter of minutes, right? Now I need to now create other network participants and join this network. Right? So now I go to the gateway, right? I said, okay. Now, instead of saying create a new production network, I'm going to say join an existing network. So I'm going to say one. Okay, join an existing network. So now the registry is sort of out of the picture. It says which one, which platform would you like to implement? So I want to implement the gateway. So I'm going to say, okay, I want to implement the gateway. Now, again, gateways are pretty much agnostic to you know any specific domain, etc. So I'm not going to put any configuration. Now, since I need to join a registry, it's going to ask me, okay, can you paste the registries you are? Right? So I'm going to paste the registries URL that we just created. Okay. And now it also comes to ask you what's the gateways URL which you want to set up. And it has started installing the gateway. Right. Now while the gateway is getting installed, let me go into the BMP adapter. I will run the same script again. It'll say, okay, what do you want to do? I want to join a new network. What do you want to install? I want to install BAP, so this is my choice number two. Okay, paste the URL of the network configuration. We will put that later. Uh, enter the BAP subscriber ID, which is basically the ID of the BAP. I'm just going to put the, on it, the domain that I have created for that. I paste it here. What is the BAP's URL, which is where it's going to, you know, uh, file requests and get called back from. I paste it here. And which registry do I want to subscribe my gateway to? Just like I did it previously, I'm going to again paste the same registry URL. And I'm going to paste it here. Okay. And it has started installing the BAP. Now the BAP, as the BAP is getting installed, I'm going to quickly go to the BPP, run the same script again. I just want to say join an existing network, BPP. Okay, you are the network configuration later, BPP subscriber ID. I'm going to put my the domain that I have sort of you know created for this particular BPP. I enter the BPP's API URL. Sorry for that. Okay. 
now it's going to ask me what page the registry URL. <coughs> and I pasted the registry URL and it just started running the PPP solution. So as you can see, a registry is set up, the gateway is set up, the PAP is set up, PPP is going to get set up almost. It's generating the public and private key pair and getting the, the PPP registered. And the network participant entry is created. How much time was that? Five minutes? Yeah. So we just set up a network in five minutes. So now, just a quick small addition to that. This is just a bare bones skeleton of a network, right? Now let's add some flavor to it. Let's say, what if I want to turn it into a, ne a network for energy transactions, right? Like the unified energy interface. So all I have to do is go to the BAP adapter okay, and go to the layer two. Layer two is the additional flavor, the domain specific configuration that I need to add. And I'm going to just simply run download layer to connect. And it's going to ask me what's the path from where I need to download this. Nest. This could be a file hosted on ONDC or on UEI or some website which contains the policies and the network specific configuration that are there. I already have that. And this is for EV charging. So this is for EV charging network. So I'm just going to take this and just paste it here. Right, and it has created, it has configured the BAP for this now. Similarly, now I'm going to do this for the BBP as well, right? So, so that you know, any charging uh, point operator can actually adapt to this. Okay, so okay, so I'm going to just say download layer two config. It's going to again ask me the same path. I'm going to the same thing. Yes. So now we have an EV charging network. So within a matter of six to seven minutes, we were able to quickly set up a network skeleton and add a flavor of EV charging to it. Now how to use this network to demonstrate that, I want to call my colleague Mayur to demonstrate how EV charging can happen, but with a little surprise. 